So consider the density function 50 minus x squared plus y squared plus z squared kilograms over meters cubed. So what we want is to set up an integral to find the mass of the solid between the cone and z is equal to 1 over the cube root of 3 times the, cube, the square root of x squared plus y squared and the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 4 and we want all of this in the first option. So to start this off, uh, let's look at the equation for the sphere. So the equation for the sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 4. So that would mean that our radius is 2. So to find the radius, we can actually convert this to spherical coordinates by having this equal to rho squared is equal to 4. And we want rho on its own, so rho is equal to the square root of 4, which is just 2. And there we have our first limits. So we can come all the way over here and write that our first limits are going to go from 0 to 2. Now, we also will need to find uh, phi. So to find phi, we actually look at this equation, and what we want to do is find the point where the cone intersects the sphere, so that would be around right here. So to do that, we have to convert the equation for the cones into spherical coordinates. So if we do that, we have our z is going to equal to rho is equal, or sorry, no, Rho cosine of phi is equal to 1 over the square root of 3 times the square root of our big function, which is just going to be x squared. So we're going to have rho squared times sine squared phi cosine theta plus our y squared, which we can convert into that b rho squared sine squared phi sine theta squared. Now, let's look at something they all have in common. What they all have is a, is a rho, a sine phi, so we can actually factor that out. And all we, all we would be left with is cosine theta, or is cosine squared theta, and sine squared theta, and when you combine those, that's actually just going to be 1. And the square root can actually cancel out what we have left, which is, so what we would have left right now is cosine phi is equal to the root of 3 over 1 times the square root of rho squared sine squared phi. So like I said, the square root can cancel this out, so our new equation would be cosine phi is equal to 1 over cube root uh, square root of 3, sorry, rho sine of the, or phi, sorry, there we go, phi. So let's solve for phi. What we want to do is we want to get phi on its own. So first, let's get rid of those rows because you divide them out and they cancel each other by just equaling 1. Let's multiply uh, this root 3 to this side. So we have root 3 cosine of phi sine of phi, and we can actually divide out the cosine phi from both sides. So what we would have here is root 3 is equal to sine phi over cosine phi, but you know sine over cosine, that's just equal to tangent. So our new equation is tangent of phi. Now to solve phi, we, we, always, we need the inverse tangent. So phi is going to equal to the inverse tangent of root 3. And either plug it into a calculator, well, it won't give you the exact answer, but what it will give you is that phi is going to equal to pi over 3. And those are our limits for phi. So we, are going to, we know that phi goes from 0 to pi over 3. Now, lastly, let's solve for our theta. Now, when looking for the theta, we actually have to look right here at the first option. Now, we know that for theta travels along the xy plane. So it's going to be going from, so it would be normally from 0 to 2 pi going around the xy plane. But what we want is the first octan, and that's just going to be this little location right here. So it's actually going to rotate from 0 on the x to the positive y. And that rotation is just going to be, uh, 
one fourth of what we actually need have since it's in on the first octant. So that's actually going to be an angle of pi over two. So those are our limits for theta, zero to pi over two. Now let's try integrating this. Now when we integrate, we have to look at this equation. Mass is equal to the triple integral of the density function um, do you, uh, with focus around the solids given here, or the cone and the sphere. So when we set up our new, our new integral, we're going to have, so we're going to have to convert this first. This is our density function, but right now it's using x, y, z, which is not what we're using, so we're going to have to convert that to spherical coordinates. So by doing that, we see that we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and like we did before with the, with the sphere, and also that's given by the distance formula, we have 50 minus rho squared. Now the Jacobian says we have to add a little something extra there, so the something extra we'll be adding here would be rho squared, oh, that, that's, okay, rho squared cosine, oh, sorry, no, not cosine, sine phi. And our new variables are going to be from rho to theta to phi. So let's look at our limits. On the rho, it's going to go from 0 to 2. Theta is going to go from 0 to pi over 2. And our phi is going to go from 0 to pi over 3. Now, let's separate the separate this. So first we're going to have from 0 to 2. We can actually factor in the, the row into this equation right here so we can have it all in just vari uh, variables of row. So that's going to be 50 row squared minus row to the fourth. Our next one is going to be from 0, all right, from 0 to pi over 2. And there's nothing there, so that's just going to be the theta. So, so far we have from 0 to 2, uh, 50 rho squared minus rho fourth to the, you know, d rho. Our next equation is going to be this. And lastly, we just have sine right there. So, for our, our phi, it's going to go from 0 to pi over 3, sine of phi. Now, let's, let's solve this out. So first of all, we have, the, we have to solve for the antiderivative of that, which would just be, okay, so solving right here, that would be 50 over 3 to the row cubed minus row to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 2. And then we solve for that, and that's going to be um, once we solve for that, we can we have the zero here, but we can just ignore that since uh, normally it's um, the entire derivative we plug in two, then we find this with respect to zero, but that's just zero, so you know it's going to be uh, zero. So we just have to focus on the two. So once we plug that in, we're actually going to have a little something. Uh, we plug in two there, and we're going to have. 1904 over 15. That's kind of ugly. So now, that's our first one. Now let's focus on theta. So for theta, the antiderivative of that is, we can just treat that as one, is going to be theta. So theta with respect to zero, from zero to pi over two. So there we have, you know, zero again, so we can just ignore that. And all we have to focus on is pi over two. So what we get for this is just going to be pi over 2. Now, sine of phi. So when we look at sine of phi, we can actually, the antiderivative of that would be negative cosine of phi, since we know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine of phi. But in this case, it's positive. So we have to have that negative, since a negative and negative cancel out and make positive. So negative cosine of phi from 0 to pi over 3. Now, 
when we plug this in, we're going to see that this new equation is actually going to give us a neg uh, cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half, but thanks to the negative, it's negative 1 half. So we have negative 1 half minus cosine of 0, which is 1, but thanks to the negative, it's 1. So minus negative 1. And you know again, uh, negative 1 half minus negative 1. The, can the negatives cancel out. It turns into an addition. So our answer for this one is actually going to be just 1 half. Now, our final solution, which I'm going to write up here, thanks to all this extra space given, is going to be the mass is equal to 1904 over 15 times pi over 2 times 1 half is equal to the mass.